Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a really nice problem with polynomials. This problem comes from a math competition but I can't remember where this problem appeared so if you do know please let us know in the comment section. So we're given that b cubed minus b is equal to 1 and we're supposed to evaluate numerically b to the fifth minus b to the four for the b values that come from the first equation. Make sense? And I'll be presenting three methods. And guess what? We'll start with the third one, because third one is the most fun. Okay? So, start with b cubed minus b equals 1. And then we're going to use the cubic formula, right? Because we don't have a b squared, so that's kind of nice. Let's write down this identity, x plus y cubed minus 3xy times x plus y equals x cubed plus y cubed. Now, if you replace x plus y with b, then you're going to get b cubed minus 3xyb equals x cubed plus y cubed. And if you compare that to our equation, you're going to realize that, okay, for those b values, the coefficient of uh, b is negative 1 or negative 3xy, which means 3xy needs to equal 1, which means xy needs to equal 1 third. And from the constant, x cubed plus y cubed needs to equal 1, right? So we get a system of equations. Let's cube both sides. We get this. And then if you replace y cubed with 1 minus x cubed, take that and plug in here. You get x cubed times 1 minus x cubed equals 1 over 27. And then you can go ahead and distribute this and put everything on the right hand side. x to the 6 minus x cubed plus 1 over 27 equals 0. Now replace x cubed with something like t. And then you're going to get a quadratic equation. Awesome. Very easy to solve because we have a formula, right? What's the formula? Well, the formula says t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4 over 27, which is going to be a pretty interesting number, 1 plus minus the square root of 23 over 27 all over 2. So those are the t values, but you got to remember t is x cubed, and there are two t values, which means one of them is x cubed, the other one is y cubed, because x cubed and y cubed are the roots of this equation. So what does that mean? Which mean this means that you can basically find the value of b from here, right? At least one of the solutions. Now, <laughs> good luck with that, right? That's going to be an interesting, interesting solution. But yeah, you can find it. Anyways, let's proceed with another method before, but before that, let's go ahead and take a look at the complex roots. Can you imagine how complex they can get? Yes, it's a cubic, so it has three equations. Again, good luck with the solution with the third method. And let's get back to first method, okay? So we're going to jump to first. And I have b cubed minus b equals 1, and I'm supposed to evaluate b to the fifth minus b to the fourth, numerically, okay? Again, I'm supposed to find a numerical value. Third method is incomplete because that's time-consuming. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate b cubed. From here, I'm going to evaluate two things, b to the fourth, which is b cubed times b, which is b plus 1 times b, which is b squared plus b. Awesome. I got b to the fourth as a quadratic. b to the fifth is just going to be b to the fourth times b, but b to the fourth is b squared plus b. Multiply by b, you get b cubed plus b squared, but b cubed is always b plus 1, b plus 1 plus b squared. From here, we get b to the fifth is b squared plus b plus 1 and b to the fourth equals b squared plus b. Now, you're supposed to subtract them because that's what we're looking for. Negate, negate, and negate. Now add them. b to the fifth minus b to the fourth. b squared cancels out, b cancels out, end up with 1. Yes, awesome, amazing, right? We get 1, which is kind of interesting too. But if you look at it, you'll get it. Right? It, once you know that it's 1, because in other words, we're saying that b cubed minus 1 
b cubed minus b is the same as b to the fifth minus b to the fourth. Now, with the first method, we're basically finding the answer nice and clean. With the second method, we're going to look, look into details. Because the second method is very detailed, and we're going to also come up with a conclusion at the end, which I think is pretty neat. Anyway, so let's continue with the second method. We did the third, right? b cubed minus b is 1. We're supposed to evaluate b to the fifth minus b to the fourth. Since we're trying to evaluate this, I don't know what it is. Let's call this k. k? k? Now, if you call this k, obviously, this is what you're going to get. If b cubed minus b minus 1 is 0, then this implies b to the fifth minus b to the fourth minus k equals 0. So in other words, we're saying that if b are the roots of this cubic, they're also going to be the roots of this, which means the quintic is sharing three of the roots with the cubic. Make sense? Okay. In other words, b cubed minus b minus 1 divides, this is very important from a polynomial standpoint, right? Because that's what we're going to base our solution on. Now, obviously, one can do long division, right? Divide this into that. And you're supposed to find zero remainder, right? At the end, in terms of k. But wait a minute. This is too long because it's long division. Come on, you don't want to do that. Let's do something else. Because I have a different idea. And that idea is the following. Since this polynomial is divisible by this polynomial, right? We know that because we just said this divides that, right? And obviously there's another factor, right? Which is the quotient and no remainder. The quotient must be a quadratic that starts with b squared because we get b to the fifth. And then there's a b, but I don't know the coefficient of b. Let's call that n. Obviously, you don't want to call it b, do you? And then for the constant term, which is a negative k, I do need a positive k so that I can get it. There you go. The only unknowns are n and k. Let's find them. Distribute to a little bit of distributive property, right? That gives you b to the fifth plus n b to the fourth plus k b cubed minus b cubed minus n b squared minus k b minus b squared. A lot of terms. Oh man, minus n b minus k. Okay, that's it, right? Let's simplify this. And this is equal to zero. No, it's not equal to zero. It's equal to this. Right? There you go. It's equal to that. Okay, we'll set it equal. Let's rearrange or collect like terms. b to the fifth plus n b to the fourth. And then plus k minus 1 b cubed minus n plus 1 because they are negative b squared minus the opposite of k plus n. I mean plus the opposite b minus k. Awesome. Now when you compare this to b to the fifth minus b to the fourth minus k, this means the coefficient of b to the fourth is negative 1. There's no b cubed, so the coefficient of b cubed is 0. The coefficient of z, b squared is also 0, which verifies n equals negative 1 one more time, right? And this needs to be a 0 as well. But notice that from here we get n equals negative 1, k equals 1, and n plus k equals 0 which are all satisfied. Awesome. We got the values, but guess what? You do you really need n? Not really, but here's the thing. We were looking for k, right? So we got it. k equals 1 is the answer. But this has a nice conclusion, which tells us that this coin tick can actually be factored into this and that. And b squared minus b plus 1 is actually a very special quadratic. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And I want to show you one more thing before I leave. Notice that if you do polynomial division with a computer, of course, or a calculator, this becomes, uh oh, stop jumping around. This becomes the remainder, right? But the remainder is supposed to be zero which means k equals 1. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. Bye-bye.